Could we, Dr. Cregan, could we uh, be looking at the changes in populations maybe as we develop uh, through some of the sequencing and, and learn? I mean, is that something that will be looked at even? Uh, that certainly isn't going to be some of the first things right. we'll look at. The, that, that's a longer-term effort is trying to fit a, a soybean genetic uh, package to a production practice. Mm -hmm. But certainly, if you're double cropping, you probably want to use different bean than if you're full season or, or various agronomic situations are better be uh, different beans are adapted. And I'm sure this could be another situation like that. Okay, back to the phone. Steve in Indiana, you're on with our panel tonight. What's your question? Yes, uh, my question is this. We're uh, looking at the new genetics in soybeans and so on. I'm in northwest Indiana. And my question is this. Uh, we're paying tech fees and so on for higher yielding beans. And my question is this. Uh, we have noticed that bean prices have dropped considerably in the last few months. Why are we looking at raising more bushels per beans? Why not go back to average yielding beans and sustaining a higher price for 40 bushel beans per acre instead of shooting for a 60 bushel bean per acre when we're in a business for ourselves as individuals instead of as a global? All right, Steve. Well, let's get into this, Rick. I mean, that's kind of a marketing issue and also about uh, uh, where you see the industry going, and certainly it's been towards uh, increasing demand in this country and around the world. Uh, what would you say to his scenario, what he'd propose to go to? Yeah, well, he had many, many parts to his question, and, and I definitely agree with him on the increasing yields, but up, you know, up until now, and at, as of recent connections meeting this year, improving yields and traits and qualities of the soybean as number one issue coming out of this meeting. And that's something we're still always going to look to increase, is always increase yields. As for increasing you know, quality, that's another area, and that should go hand in hand. We hopefully have, um, with definitely the new traits coming down, with the low lens already on the market, we're working on middle oleic oils, which are going to be on the market very shortly. Um, we're looking at high oleic, which should be out sometime in the 2012 region. Um, so you're definitely looking at so many new traits coming down the pipeline. So that's going to hopefully be an added value to the, to the farmer. So what you're saying is it's not just about yield. There are uh, niche markets out there and certain characteristics that customers will buy and they want in that soybean. So you have to be able to deliver that. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a, a niche market, whether it's geographically or somewhere, whether, the, whether eventually, the, cause I hate to say, the commodity bean will be here, what, will be the, what finally will settle as the general commodity bean. But we're trying to also look at the, you know, the general use of our end users and you know, see what they need. We're looking at the animal ag industry with the low phytate, high sucrose soybean, and there's a you know, working group going on right now testing that in the, in the hogs so to see whether that's something that can be useful into the future. Uh, with the low lin, it's already on the market, and farmers that are growing them are seeing a premium in some areas. We're hoping to see that with the middle laics and with the high, with the high oleics and, and several other traits that come down the pipeline. His bigger point, I think, is about should we be so worried about more yields, more demand, moving more product, or should we scale that down? Uh, the goal is to increase that demand, increase that efficiency, right, from the soybean research, uh, from the soybean checkoff standpoint. And then hopefully through that, that then works to increase the value of the soybean, right? Well, as many farmers saw last year, I mean, there was a strong competition for corn ground. If soybeans do not bring the same value back to the farmer, the farmer is going to grow less soybeans and grow more corn. And as much as I favor both of them, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm a soybean farmer also, and if I can benefit by increasing yields, which still, as of right now, that's how the farmer is paid by increased bushels. And the next step we have to take is making sure our domestic use and our international market use increases also at the same time we're increasing yield. Let's go back to the phone. We'll go to the state of Arkansas. Wayne, welcome to our program tonight. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Mm -hmm. We are doing very well, I suppose, here in Clay County, Arkansas, on the yield increase over years gone by, but we have a nematode problem. In the tri-state area here, northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, and western Tennessee, we have a lot of cyst and root knot nematodes. And we would like to uh, know if the scientist is making much headway on uh, research to bring us a bean that's more resistant to this problem. Okay, we will talk about it. 
And I'll start with you, Dr. Cregan. That's one of the things you mentioned, that uh, that should be something that we can really attack and address with this new breakthrough. Certainly that mining the germplasm collection, if you will, for all kinds of resistance, and, and, and certainly SCN, soybean cyst nematode, is number one, uh, is, a, is certainly a priority. Now, you mentioned also some of the biotech approaches that are being looked at that I think have an awful lot of uh, uh, potential also. It's, cyst has been a problem for 50, 60 years, beginning in the south and then moving across the whole country, and, and it's, a, it's the toughest, probably the toughest of our pests. And I think maybe some of these biotech approaches that, that Chekhov is looking at, that you could describe better than I, because I'm not really familiar with them. Uh, yeah, yes. Dr. Cregan mentioned that Chekhov is working in three areas right now on soybean cyst nematode. We're working on one on the worm itself, because many farmers do not know the worm that the, you know, the cyst they have in the field at that time. So we're coming up with tests that'll show you what virulence you have, so farmers can plant a correct resistant soybean trait. Because many of the many of the soybean lines that are out there, you may have a race five, and the trait you're planting may not affect, you know, the variety you plant may not be affected by the race five. And we're also looking at the plant itself. We're trying to basically make sure the worm or the plant, you know, through genetic resistance. Um, you know, right now your main genetic resistance is PI eight 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 seven eight eight. And that's where most of the resistance comes from in the plant right now. And we're looking for new varieties through the germplasm, and hopefully, with you know, with the soybean genome being mapped, we can find some traits faster that maybe that we've missed already. And the third area we're looking at is the transformation side, which I mentioned earlier, is the RNA interference, which basically is a, is a broad spectrum control, and that should be in the market. We're hopefully with by 20, you know, 2015 to 2020. I hope those of you listening that are not farmers realize that there's a lot more to farming than just buying some seed and throwing it in the ground. I mean, it is amazing what's going on, the research being developed, and the decisions that are being made uh, to go into these different areas to address uh, the challenges to, to grow a crop.